we partially talked about the origins of MS-DOS when we just talked about CPM a few videos ago. But now we're going to go a little bit deeper into that story for reasons I think will become apparent pretty soon. Let's talk about Microsoft's other DOS. We've done a lot of videos on the MSX and its various machines, including free videos covering the history of its specification. So we've covered the beginnings of the MSX a little deeper in those videos, but the important thing to know in this video is that MSX was a set of specifications for manufacturers to build compatible computers. This specification was put together with a cooperation of Microsoft, the ASCII Corporation, and several electronic companies, initially in Japan. It mandated a Z80 computer with, originally, 16K of memory, at least one cartridge slot and a tape port. It also specified several internal details, such as how the memory maps would work. Obviously, one thing that was on the rise during this 8-bit era was the use of disk drives. And this was something the MSX group knew would be needed. So Microsoft decided to write a DOS for the MSX range. MSX DOS would be written for the Z80 processor, naturally, and would focus on the 3.5-inch disk format a format that was fast becoming the leading standard. These floppy systems became available early in the MSX1 era, which means they required a cartridge which contained a ROM with the necessary BIOS extensions. MSX DOS could then be loaded from disk. Now, obviously, Microsoft already had its exceptionally popular MS-DOS system, but whilst it had started life as a clone, kind of, a CPM, a system that had started on the Z80 processor, it was not directly compatible after being converted to Intel's 808X line. And so, in 1983, Microsoft's Paul Allen called Tim Patterson. Patterson had been responsible for creating 86DOS, which had eventually become MS-DOS 1. Patterson had taken CPM and converted its assembler from Z80 to 8086, something that was possible because the Z80 had been created by ex-Intel employees and had had a similar base. So in theory, going back the other way should be easy enough. <laughs> Despite being initially unenthusiastic about the job, Patterson had a working version in a few months and was paid $100,000 and given preferential license agreements for Microsoft's MS-DOS. Interestingly, because of its CPM roots and the Z80 processor in the MSX line, what was it we ended up with was a weird halfway house between a CPM and MS-DOS. It had a similar command set to MS-DOS and used the same file format, but it was capable of running much of the CPM80 software. The final few versions of MSX-DOS were created by the ASCII Corporation, Microsoft having decided to leave the MSX standard. Right, well, <laughs> that's kind of the history, well, a very potted history of it. There's, I'll leave some sources to find out even more information about it. Uh, but what we really should do is take a little look at it. To take a look at MSX-DOS, we're using this rather lovely Panasonic FSA1ST Turbo R machine. Uh, sort of the penultimate in the line of, uh, of kind of mainline MSX machines. The GT is the, the big brother of this one and, and yes, uh, a little bit more powerful, not a huge amount, and we'll be rectifying some of the differences in a video later on. Uh, so let's power this on. And because we've got our mapper car in there, what will happen is we will get uh, this stuff will load up first. And then we'll get this list of things. But we don't need to use any of these. We are instead going to exit out of what is this called Sofa Run, which is this little menu system. And that takes us here. <laughs> and this will look a little bit weird if you've only seen MS DOS, but if you just imagine those yen symbols are in fact backslashes then you'll kind of recognize it a bit more. So if I CD and backslash <laughs> and I do a DIR, look at that. <laughs> you can kind of, there's bits there you'll understand and recognize. There's command.com, there's also command2.com, we'll ignore that for now. But it's very, very much just like uh, the, there you go, <laughs> very much like the MS-DOS you know and recognize. And this can read PC disks. So I don't run the software, obviously, but it can read the disks. Um, so you could kind of transfer information between the two, which is interesting because that is something that CPM did kind of struggle with over a lot of its uh, different uh, machines. 
Uh, so, I guess the first thing, we've got this little folder here, which we'll go into using the CD command, of course, CPM. And this is a bunch of CPM games. So let's go into one that we kind of will all know. Now, oh, yeah, my Z key's a bit knackered on this machine. It's one thing I have to address. This has got the, I mean, even tildes in the name. <laughs> you can, <laughs> although that's not the fault of DOS. That's uh, that's the actual the cart the uh, the cartridge that's doing that. But we go into here, do a directory. We've got some com files. So if I type in Zork one, then there you go. You probably recognise that, right? The formatting is not perfect, but it kind of isn't on a lot of CPM machines, but that's, we're playing Zork. It's, it's a CPM machine, then we're playing Zork, which I think is kind of wonderful. <laughs> so this really does kind of make it that halfway house between the two systems, where we can read data at least from uh, from MS-DOS disks, and we under, anyone using MS-DOS can certainly use the uh, command line without any real issues, but we can run some CPM software. Now, not all CPM software, there is some that won't run, but all the stuff I've got here it does still work. I don't know how to quit out of Zork, by the way. Oh, no, it literally quit. There you go. That's that. That's easily answered. Dirt, duh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's, we've got Microsoft Basic, which is the basic that Microsoft made for CPM. And if we load that up, there we go, we're in basic. <laughs> we can do... Oh, typing's going well. There we are, <laughs> CPM basic. Um, why do you break out of this? It doesn't matter. So there you are. This is MSX DOS, which is a kind of a DOS which Microsoft at least commissioned for their uh, their part of the standard for the uh, MSX, and its development is very much a reverse of what happened for them to get uh, MS DOS, where they kind of took what they had and went back to close to the CPM which I just find personally, I find fascinating. Anyway, let's do a summary. And there we have it. That's my video for December. Well, my first video for December, I do have an idea for another one. And that's it for well, my talk on Microsoft's other DOS. It's, um, it is a genuinely, I uh, it said at the, at the end of the video, slightly spoiling my wrap up, but it is a really fascinating thing that how kind of this DOS evolved from what evolved from CPM and kind of went back more towards CPM. Um, so it, there's a lot of compatibility between uh, this and, and CPM enough that it runs those programs and obviously basic and Zork as I showed you ran, but all those programs I had on in that folder, they all run. So uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, I haven't tried some more application -y software, but I do know that quite a few of like the word processors do run as well. So, um, uh, in fact, Paul, uh, Tim, Tim Patterson, <laughs> Tim Patterson actually used uh, one of the word processors uh, as kind of his porting tool across. So uh, there's, yeah, there is some compatibility there as well, which is, I think, astonishing. In fact, I haven't found any software that doesn't run. I'm only going by reports that there's some software that doesn't run. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, then please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you don't believe this should have been in December, then please leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to check out all of the other December videos, which will be probably much more orientated around MS DOS and things like that. So, <laughs> uh, well worth watching, and probably by people who are more used to doing MS DOS stuff as well, rather than me, who just does old crusty stuff that doesn't really that existed before really MS DOS became a big thing. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for watching. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood to get us through the week. We're getting re enthused. Back to the past and the things we used. We all know that our pasts were great. Escaping the things that today we hate. Getting re enthused, getting re enthused, getting re enthused, getting re enthused.
Tschüss.